All right, y'all. ZZ the King. Like and subscribe. Add me on Facebook, social media sites. Fix my camera a little bit before I go. Now this right here, it's a small story time real quick. It ain't gonna be long. This was my introduction to basically human whore. This is what got me started with Jigsaw in my opinion. If Seven never came out, this is my, for me personally, this is my headcanon prequel to the Saw franchise. It's not traps or nothing like that, but the psychological way he do things and the way he conduct himself, it takes time to commit these um, seven deadly sin crimes. And I adore this movie. And I'm going to get to the cast, box office, and budget, and I'm going to fucking go. Because this is one of my all-time go-tos. I watch this movie, like, once or twice a year. Like, if it's on TV and I'm just flipping through channels, I still peep it out. But I go to this movie a few times a year. Spoilers for the movie, even though it came out in 95. It had a budget of 30 million and a box office of 327 million. So they could have been like, let's somehow try to find a way to make a sequel or a prequel or a franchise. That's what makes Seven so great. Stand alone. Now I did an in-depth analysis that got a comic view part to that. I'm not putting none of that into this. This is just the Seven movie canon, not the overall Seven franchise canon. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to get to the cast, and I'm going to go. We got Morgan Freeman as William Somerset, but throughout the review, I'm just going to call him Somerset. We got the great Brad Pitt as Detective Mills, and it's the same with him. I'm just going to be saying Mills for Brad Pitt. We got Gwyneth Pratro as Tracy Mills. This is Brad Pitt's wife. And we got the great Kevin Spacey as John Doe. I don't care about Kevin Spacey's legal issues, like I said about Will and Jada. If it's ever a movie I'm covering somebody who having legal issues or race issues or cancel culture, I'm always gonna bring it up, but I'm telling you, it's not about that, it's about this character in this particular movie. And he A plus in this. We got Richard Roundtree as the district attorney. I don't know his name and I'm sorry, but he's a fucking legend in the black community. And we got Arlie Army as the police captain. That's just from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The, um, boy. The Seven Daily Sins is from the Bible, I'm a, as you all know. It's gluttony, greed, sloth, envy, wrath, pride, and lust. I said this in my in-depth analysis, and I'm going to damn repeat it, because some of y'all wasn't even subscribers then, or never checked me out. These deadly sins can be great or you know, saying detrimental. Gluttony is horrible if basically if you overeating, overindulging. I'm not gonna go through every sin and what they can be, but you know, if you use them properly, all of these things can be good, but they can also backfire. And the movie kicks off, you see in the dichotomy of William Somerset and David Mills. Mills is more of a rough and tumble, bad boy kind of established character where he like, his shirt all wrinkled, he more gruffy, his beard a little rough. Even though he got a beautiful wife and he married, he just seemed like the young up and comer where Morgan Freeman got a chessboard, his house more laid out and set. Everything, his police badge, knives, guns, all that's perfectly. He get the little piece of lint out of his shirt. His house in pristine shape. He got the chessboard where Mills' house was all boxes everywhere. For one, they just moved in, but you... They just showing you the difference in their characters. So, I know it's the Blu-ray and different copies of the movie. Some movies got different opening acts. So, I'm just going off of my opening scene from the copy I got. It opens on a murder of a crime of passion. A man and wife was heard arguing for hours before the wife upped the blick and slimed her husband out. Now, this is where you see the difference with Mills and Somerset. Where Somerset is a psychological silence of the lamb buffalo bill type of detective it's like forensic science homicide detective i'm assuming but he ain't just a catch the bad guy cops and robbers detective first 48 kind of homicide detective he go after buffalo bill type of criminals in this world where mills go after normal murders so when they investigating the crime scene find out the information 
that's when Somerset asks is, did the kids see it? They're like, who gives a fuck? A woman killed her husband, that's all we're here for. So you see, he think different. That's when Detective Mills enter the scene like, hi, I'm Mills. They go outside, have a little coffee, little introduction, and they have a little pissing match immediately. He like, I'm gonna be with you, nuts, and I heard you retiring, so I'm finna take over. He like, why you even want to get transferred over here? This is Somerset and Mills going back to back. He like, well, you don't want quitting, so whatever. He like, you just met me. You can't talk to me like that. He like, well, listen, we just met. We shouldn't get off on the wrong foot. He like, you right. He like, well, you just finna learn this week and, and play the back row. I'm Batman, you Robin, goddammit. That's when Somerset, Mills is like, Hold on, fam. I'm not a rookie or no SPI type of cop. Now, I was a homicide detective for five years. I wasn't in no BW3s or Taco Bell security. I know about this. I'm about that life. He like, that's all good and gravy. But this is a different level of cop, of um homicide. And in real life and in a movie perspective, Morgan Freeman is probably 25 years older than Brad Pitt. Real life and Mills and Somerset characters. So he'd been probably a forensic detective longer than Mills probably been alive or a cop, for say. So after that, this shit don't take no time. Every scene pay off a scene or two later. Every exposition, you get the payoff. It's nothing left unturned. It's no, all the T's is getting crossed and the I's is getting dotted. Ain't nothing getting left behind where the movie get, go off and you finna make all these YouTube and analysis. What if this happened? What if that happened? No, they answer every damn question you got in this movie. We get to the damn set, dev set seven daily sins. Excuse my French. We starts off with gluttony. Now the aesthetics and the backdraft of the movie is perfect. It's very Gotham-esque. It's gloomy, rainy, dark. You know what I'm saying? You know how it looked before it's finna rain or after it's raining. Every scene, it's no sunny days. Every scene is rainy or dark. You see the visuals I'm giving you. Every scene is rainy, dark, gloomy, before dark, the, before noon, all that type of shit. Just to set the scene. So when we get on the gluttony murder scene, it's a four or five hundred pound man face down in a bowl of spaghetti. Mills is coming in the scene as a homicide detective. He investigating from that aspect. Like he looking at forced entry, bullets, shell casings, blood splatter, where Somerset looked at it from a forensics perspective. He see the man been hand hog tied and feet and arms. He see he been had a gun pressed against his head. He see the throw a bucket under there where Mills actually discovered that. But he seeing this was not just a murder. You could have came in and shot him while pressed the gun against his head. This was more of a torture. And this is before they even find the gluttony and, and grease behind the um, refrigerator. So Mills is giving all these expositions of shit he done seen in the battlefield and crime scenes and what this could particularly be. He like, you can't compare that to this. That's apples and oranges for one. And for two, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. He didn't say it like that, but his tone and demeanor was like that. And that's when Mills put the flashlight in his face like, man, who you talking to? He like, fam, go outside and help them do some other shit. I got this. They pick the fat man head up, see he dead. They do the crime scene, woo woo. Once they get out the crime scene, he get outside. He like, fam, I know I'm the, I know I'm second hand on this, and I appreciate your expertise, but can you Pete, please treat me with respect? I'm a, got a badge just like you. He like, I'ma take your word for that, and I do respect you. But in certain situations, I gotta take the lead, and you just gotta fall the fuck back. And they starting to get some straightening with each other, but it's still kind of tension until the next day. This ain't years or months of investigation or even weeks. This is one week. One movie is one week. It feels like months or years once you get to damn near the mid by Wednesday. So this is what breaks the ice between them. Because all Monday with the gluttony scene, they was at each other's throat. Once they get to Tuesday, they get to the fucking greed scene. Now they say the the crime scenes are one thing, but the exposition and the cops and the autopsy and the um doctors is another. The way they explain the mind state, the way Mills and Somerset are hearing and understanding what he did with the scalpels and how he cut people, it's like 
That's the scary part. Cause they say for Eli Gold, his name is Eli Gold. Come on. He the best defense attorney in the um city. Murder, sexual assault, pedophile, drug dealer, any crime he can get you off, whether you guilty or not. This is some better call Saul type shit. So his crime, I'm assuming, from John Doe perspective, is greed, the money. He'd defend anybody who, no matter if they're guilty or not, as long as they pay. So they say he could have had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and potentially Monday to do this. He bled this man to death and rep wrote greed and blood on the man's office floor. They said the chair was so soaked, it was like the chair was in a tsunami, like of blood. Like he captured at the man. If you see it on the screen as I'm showing you, cut the man's stomach up. Cut, I think he cut his nose or ear off or something. His lips. Like he went to town with this man. He had four days to do this. Like I said against Jigsaw setting up traps. It take time to do this kind of shit. Anybody can murder, rape, kidnap somebody. I'm sorry about my language. But you can do that in one night. For multiple nights before you get caught. But for these type of crimes, that's what it's different to me for. It takes time to do this and plan this and set this type of shit up. So, that's when they get back to the office. Because after every murder, they depressed, they sad, they trying to regroup. They realize and we don't know who it is. They don't know religion of the man, the sex of the man, the race of the man. Is it a man or a woman? They don't have a clue who doing this. No fingerprints and no scene, no no information, no nothing. John Doe not even taunting them yet. Because later on in the movie, he get to call them and all kind of shit before he flat out shows up. But I'm going ahead of myself. They get to the um police station and... um. The cop like, man, this shit crazy, man. They fucked dude up. The um, Arlie E. Kern, um, Army's character, the police captain. So that's when he like, no, nah, man, Mills got it. I'm good. I retire in a week. That's when the um, police captain give him a vow that was from the fat scene, the gluttony scene that was fed to him. So his mind get to going. He go back to the crime scene. He taking all the little information, the clues he done figured out. He moves the refrigerator. And that's when he realizes... John Doden wrote a note on the wall in gluttony in Greece. So now we got the greed with the lawyer, the gluttony with the grease. That's two of the seven daily sins. Morgan Freeman character Somerset knows this, but he got to get a real understanding of it. So he goes to the library, the restriction section. And he reading the Divine Comedy, the Holy Bibles, all kind of things about the Seven Deadly Sins, as I'm showing you the books and stuff on the screen that you're seeing now, what he was reading to get more information. He go back to the police station with Mills of Somerset the next day. It's Wednesday. He like, listen, we got gluttony and grease. We got greed with the lawyer. Expect five more of these in Seven Deadly Sins. A1 exposition he giving you. Mills looking like, damn, this shit is a little deeper for my first week. So he like, you know what? I don't think he ready for something like this. I'm going to stay on for at least to this over. That's when we get to the scariest um, crime of the movie and the most justified to me. Sloth murder was basically a drug dealing pedo pedophile he got what he wanted and it's a warm spot in hell for like people like this motherfucker but john doe went beyond just a normal nigga he kidnapped the man paid the man rent for an entire year he had all kind of injections and all kind of tubes in the man's testicles. He cut the man's arm off and hand to use his hands and fingerprints, which Saw did take with Hoffman using um, Strong's fingerprints. He took the, cut the man's hand off and used fingerprints for other crime scenes just to taunt the detectives. He had this man cap captive for an entire year, taking pictures throughout the entire year as you've seen on the screen. That's why I put viewer discretion advised for the first time ever in my video, because this is the first time I think the body horror and the visuals are disturbing, even though this is for grown-ups and I got 18 or older on all my videos. But this shit right here, I hope YouTube don't fuck with. He tortured this man for a year. When the cops enter the scene, Mills and Somerset really ain't feeling like, from they, they can't head cannon profile of what John Doe is, this character don't fit the bill. So when they get there, he the damn victim. 
John Doe done had this man for a year, kidnapped him and torturing him before he finally um, surpassed his injuries. The doctor explains his injuries, he bit his tongue off a long time ago. If you put a flashlight in his face, he'd fucking go in a comatose shocking. Like, whoa! Now Mills and Somerset is just like, uh, depressed again. They like, shit! We got gluttony, greed, sloth. We don't know who this nigga is. We ain't coming close. But throughout the movie, they getting information from dirty cops, you know what I'm saying? Getting illegal FBI database information. So they come up across a particular address. They go to that particular address, and it's John Doe House, luckily. John Doe got his bag of groceries going to the crib. He see Mills and Somerset at the house. He get the dumping. Da, 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 da. It's a shootout. This is the action scene of the movie where Somerset takes cover. Mills returns fire. Now they running through the whole apartment complex. This is how you know the city fucked up. It's gunshots. People don't care. Um, um, John Doe and Mills and Somerset are running through people's apartments trying to chase and apprehend John Doe. People ain't like, ah! They just like, oh shit, whoa. People running through your house shooting. People ain't even caring. So he gets the drop on, um, well, Somerset too old and slow to catch. Mills is on his ass, but he finessing, jumping down balconies, jumping over roofs getting away he get to the back alley where it's rainy he hiding on top of a van Mills is you know, on his police shit with the pistol he hits him in the head with a crowbar put the pistol to his head as you see on the screen basically could have ended his life there Mills bloody as a motherfucking arm and a cast fucked up he like so pissed they go back to the apartment Somerset like listen you finna fuck the case up we have no reason to be here we have no Search warrant to go in this man's house. We cannot do that. Mills so fucking hot headed and pissed, he kicked the dough in. And he's arguing about it now, my nigga. They go in, get all the information they need. It's a fucking treasure troll of evidence and fucking ton of diaries of his random thoughts without dates. It's all kind of drugs and needles that he used to um, apprehend and kidnap his victims. Everything. He got pictures and photos from police that he... Because there's a scene in the movie where they're taking pictures of Mills and Somerset. He paid um, paparazzi to take pictures of crime scenes. He got all of that shit in his apartment. He called a crib like, yeah, man, that was a close one, y'all. This is the closest y'all done been in a couple days to catching me. But I had to reschedule my plans, and, um, yeah, I'll see y'all later. Hang up on their ass. They like, yeah, damn. They record the conversation so they could just at least have this voice. So now, we get to the, um, I think we get to the pride where this one was fucked up because she had this lady had a choice like like a like a game either call help for help or take sleeping pills and die because what John Doe did he sliced her up because she's a supermodel sliced her face up cut her up she was so ugly on the outside she was so beautiful on the outside I mean she was so ugly on the inside she couldn't stand to be ugly on the outside is what his perspective was so he cut her cut her face up cut her nose off to spite her face and she didn't want to live so he said you can call for help and be disfigured or take the sleeping pills and die and he had him glued to her hand bloody ass crime scene so then he called the cops like on some britney spears shit oops i did it again i just killed somebody so they like damn mills and somerset getting sick of this nigga this thursday they like, damn, man, this nigga catching bodies every day. We, we almost had him, but not really. He could have blown your motherfucking head off. So now he gets to the point where he like, I had to reschedule my plan. And this is where it's like, I don't know if he always planned on fucking with Mills and his wife or not. He turned himself in. First of all, he, he showed the cat. That's how you know the city fucked up. He show up to a cab, bloody as a motherfucker, hands bandaged, bloody as a motherfucker, Three different bloods on his clothes, and the motherfucker say, okay, you can get in my cab and drive to the police station. He gets to the police station, Mills and Somerset like, man, I think we're getting closer, but it's still some more information we gotta gather. They like, he like, detective, I'm here. They still walking, not paying attention. This is a police station. Other cops ain't even noticing or paying attention. So he's saying louder, detective, y'all looking for me. Mills and Somerset still not paying attention. Other cops still not paying attention. They walk up the stairs, as you see on the screen. Detective! I'm here! They look like, oh shit, freeze, 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 nothing, all that shit. I'm looking like y'all don't, don't get loud. 
He turned himself in. Y'all need to just shut the fuck up and apprehend him. They arrest him. He bloody as a motherfucker. That's when we get to the crime scene um, interrogation. He's sitting there chilling, hands bandaged up. He got his tea, ready to spill the tea. Like, yeah, I got a few um more bodies out there, but I need Mills and Somerset to take him to me. This is his lawyer talking on his behalf. They're like, man, fuck that. We ain't doing shit. We got him right now. He didn't get his little three cots in the meal, his little cable. Hell, my wife don't even got cable. But we ain't finna do none of his demands. He like, well, John Doe said he got two more bodies. And y'all see all the blood on him was different bodies as unknown people. If y'all take him there, he'll confess. If y'all don't, we gonna tell the press y'all ain't doing this and it's two more bodies y'all let go. They like, damn, he got us in the fucking chokehold again. All right, we'll do it. They get shaved up, dressed up, you know what I'm saying, put their wires on. They on the little last little latch. Last little mission for John Doe. Best scene of the movie for me. This is the scene that stole the movie and stole my heart. Not hard like that, but oh shit, that fucked up. Anyways, as that happened, he goes to the, hold on one second, I gotta fix that real quick. I'm sorry, fuck up a wall, fuck ups. I can let that slide, my bag about that, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Anyways, let's go, continue, fuck it. Now they in a police car, taking John Doe to where he allegedly got the last two, um, bodies at so this is where you hear all of John Doe's exposition about the murder and about all the crimes he done committed and why he do it he talking about the sloth he talking about the um the lawyer he talking about the gluttony like y'all probably secretly thank me for that one type shit so Somerset is listening as attentive as it gets trying to find out what's really good with him and getting psychological, his real thoughts. Mills is still looking at it from a, you a criminal, you crazy type shit. So he like, I can't wait till we get to the scene. You really gonna love it. So now we get to the last scene. They pull up at the spot. A van pulls up. They like, it's a van, it's a van. Cause it's a helicopter. And, you know, so they got a little caravan following the whole scene. When the van pull up, Somerset runs to it. He's like, man, if a guy paid me $500 to come here. I ain't got nothing on me. It's just a box he want me to deliver. The box, spoilers, is Mills' wife. Because now we pan back to um, John Doe and Mills. He like, yeah, I'm glad it's just me and you. Now I get to talk to your ass. I guess my sin is envy. I envy you. I want to taste the life of a married man. So when before you went to work this morning, I slid in your crib. I tried to play the love and husband and just see what the life of a normal guy, family man was like. And when he say this, I want to taste the life of a married man without getting perverted. You can only imagine what John Doe did to Tracy Mills this particular morning before he murdered her. So this would have made me throw up hearing this. Like I would have probably self-deleted myself i wouldn't have been able to take this or i'd have done what mills did and then did that but this shit like when when somerset opens the box he jumps like whoa because it's tracy ed and she's pregnant a scene or two before this she have a lunch meeting with mills like i'm scared to tell him because i don't want to be i don't want to be a burden on him uh, she's telling somerset this about her husband so he connected to both of them so he running back to the scene where John Doe and Mills is. He like, is, is it true? Is, is that what's in the box? I'm sweating again. Is that what's in the box? He like, man, we all the suspects. We always was on the list. She was, she was, she was, she was, she was in fair play. He like, and then Somerset throws his gun like Mills. Drop the gun. He like, yeah, I guess I'm envy, and you need to be my wrath. Be wrath. He like, no. Don't do it, Somerset. Don't do it, Mills. If you do it, John don't win. He completes the seven. Don't do it. He have a flash. They show a flash of Tracy. So sad. And then he blows his head off. Ta, 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 ta. Three or four more after. When I saw that, I was like, whoa. Then the scene cuts to the next scene. They like, what the fuck happened? He like, man, I don't know. John Doe got us again. He like, but I ain't retiring. I'm going to be here. They showing Mills in the back of the police car. He just staring off in the earth. He gone. He probably, this is still a murder on his behalf. But with the circumstances, they probably gave him a slap on the wrist or psychological, you know what I'm saying, evaluation for a year or two. And I don't blame him because this shit was dramatic. But this movie to me 
And like I said earlier, it's the head cannon, the prequel to Wild Like Saw, a psychological killer that's a human, not a slasher. This, without a shadow of a doubt, is a complete 10, no debate. And one thing I noticed since watching my last videos the last month, I've been covering a lot of 10s, but if you've been a subscriber long enough, you know I done covered a lot of fucking fours and sixes. It just so happened, my latest iteration, the way I've been doing my videos with the visuals, it's been all 10s for some reason. It ain't gonna continue to be like that, but this is a definitely 10, and that's all I got for you. ZZ the King, like and subscribe, your favorite horse channel, favorite horror channel. And you big YouTuber, stop stealing my shit, but I'm out.